Well, hey everyone. Uh, my name is Amanda Olson, and a lot of people know me as Master Mom. So I'm here today during this uh, crisis time to talk with uh, also Dr. Greg Moody on some different things that can help create uh, harmony out of this crisis and uh, go over some information in my books to help you at home. So I'd like to welcome uh, Dr. Greg Moody. Well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, it's been great working with you. I've known you for, gee, it's been pretty close to 25 or 30 years over the year, over lots and lots of different things that we've uh, known each other on. And the last couple of years, we got to work together on, on your books. I've got your books here. They've been, I, I don't have them just here because we're having our, our meeting, but I have them here to kind of show off to people about all the things about your first book, Create a Happy and Harmonious Home. And this one, the Parenting Survival Guide, guide that I was able to with one of my hats that in uh, go to karate help you help you publish and it was a kind of an honor to help you publish it was it wasn't just kind of an honor it was an honor to help you publish these books so it's uh, pretty exciting to get um, to get these things out to the community and I know you get to work with all the people in Johnson City um, but I, I think that as uh, as you're working with the people in Johnson City it's starting to kind of bleed over to everybody in the country that I know you get to talk to uh, and uh, a lot of people are getting your message about what you get to do for students, for kids, and, and for parents, especially for parents to help the, the kids that they have with all kinds of issues. So now with this coronavirus crisis going on, it seems to be even more important to, to, be, helping, um, to be helping kids with the, the issues that they're having. And really, it's issues that they have all the time. It's just that now we're focusing on stuff because everybody's having problems at the same time. Right. And, uh, you know, everybody's going through this together as opposed to pockets of people having issues in their life, you know, you know, kind of isolated here and there. This is everybody together at the same time. So, um, you know, I think it's very timely to have the parent, survivor, parent survival guide right now uh, and also the Happy and Harmonious Home because they all have really t uh, good tips in there to uh, just do little, you know, for me, it's, it's the little things that you can do that make a big difference. And that's what I talk about in both of these. But I would, uh, I would like to tell everybody what a pleasure it was to have you uh, help me with this because, you know, I'm, I, I have the ideas and I, I get it out on paper and, and your, your company and your help has put it all together. And, you know, it's just a, it's just a nice book. You know, I, I couldn't have done that on my own for sure and get it out there. And uh, it was just a real pleasure, and you made it a very easy uh, experience for me. And then, you know, just locally here, being able to give out the book to people, and and like you said, during this time, being able to talk to people across the country. But uh, if you wouldn't mind, would you let everybody know uh, kind of your credentials besides just a besides just a master in taekwondo? <laughs> Well, yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, I'm an eight degree black belt in Taekwondo and like you and I've been studying for a long time. And so that's what I do mostly for a living. I've been doing that for 25 years professionally. I've been doing it for 30 years as a, as a martial artist. But uh, in, in other, I've got a lot of different hats I wear. I do a lot of different things. So while I was, while I was uh, building my business as a martial arts, I got my PhD in education and my master's degree in counseling. So I've kind of got a little bit different uh, background than a lot of different, a lot of people in our field. Um, while I, before all that stuff, I was an engineer. So everybody uh, kind of thinks that's an odd uh, set of things to, to have as a, as a, is an educational background. I used to work on satellites and rockets. But since I, I really got my master's degree in counseling so that I, because I knew I wanted to be a martial artist and help work with people, um, originally I was going to be a licensed psychologist and that's what I wanted to do. Recently, I just got my licensure as a counselor. I just passed that, that certification. So I keep, like, I keep wanting to get involved in um, the field of psychology. And really, uh, that's one reason I'm, I'm really drawn to all the work you do because you help kids and parents more than more than what most uh, school teachers and psychologists do anyway not that they're not really valuable and they have their place in what you do and I know you recommend psychologists uh, very appropriately for for kids and families and all that but I, I like studying that field because in our field in martial arts we work with kids and families and and frankly adults as well 
so much and what we do helps them with so many issues that they have in, in so many ways. Um, so that's one thing that I do. Um, I also work with a, a company called Martial Arts Wealth that does consulting with martial arts schools. I do a lot of work with a company called GoTo Karate, which uh, does the book publishing. So we helped you with your book. Um, and it does a lot of work with helping martial arts schools market. And I really firmly believe it's something at this time that I, that I really am kind of, uh, vehement about is that now this time is when people need that kind of training even more. And it's kind of funny because uh, a lot of us are stuck staying at home. I'm in Arizona, you're in Tennessee, and we got the message that we have to stay at home, which brings up all kinds of things we should talk about today uh, about survival. But uh, my schools are uh, training people on video and training people one-on-one -on, -one on video, even though we have to stay at home. Uh, yours are too. Uh, so we've got lots of opportunities to keep training people. And I believe so strongly in martial arts and what we do and how we impact people that we have to stay open. It would be negligent for us to close. I believe so strongly that we make a big difference in people's lives. Um, some of our colleagues just close. And to me, that's that's not right. We should stay open. It's a, we have an obligation to our students to stay open. So so those are some of the hats that we wear. And um, so the, when I work with Go To Karate in particular to get, get more people to do martial arts, that's our mission, is to help people do more martial arts and help school owners get more people to do martial arts. It's because it's so important for people. So anyway, I don't want to take up the time talking about me. I, I think uh, uh, what, what you've done is uh, in your school, and you've got such an amazing school in Tennessee, and uh, to expand that into what you're doing with Ask Master Mom is just unbelievable. Uh, I, the, the TV show that you have and how you've done outreach in the community and expanded your 30 years of experience in uh, martial arts into growing that into more direct work with the parents and direct work with the students so that they can, they can get some of your expertise which again goes really transcends everything that we do in, in uh, counseling and psychology is, is just amazing. So the book is something I really want to spend some time talking about it and hear what you have to say about, uh, about all this. And what you said is really important. If I could say one more thing that the, the survival, the survival guide is so relevant right now because of the crisis, but the, but the crisis is just a compression in a way of everything that happens all the time. I mean, people have issues with losing their jobs. People have issues with divorce and people have issues with family structural issues and people have issues with, um, you know, they're ha having to stay home because of, you know, a tornado or, or you know, or well, that, maybe that's a bad example. Then the tornado takes their house. But people have all kinds of these major crises crises all the time, all the time. The difference now is it's just everybody at once, but you're always going to have these crises in their, your life. And if parents are good at helping their kids handle this and getting through it with the attitude that, hey, things are not so great, but we can keep going, that's one of the number one predictors of whether people will be successful at the end and be strong at the end. And that's what I think you help people with really, really better than anybody. So anyway, I'm really excited to do the rest of it. Don't let me keep talking. <laughs> well, it's good to hear from you. And, and really, I just uh, agree with, with everything that you've said there, um, especially the part about we have an opportunity right now in this time where we're all going through it together to teach our children how to deal with crises. You know, how do you handle this? Because you know, if you, if you shield your children from all these, you know, bad things that happen from them, you know, when they do move out or go off to college or start a job or start their own families, they're going to have no idea how to uh, deal with crises. And to think that they're not going to is really a disservice. And so right now we can say, okay, the whole world is going through this. Here's how we're going to get through it. You know, and, and, you know, for me, I say this all the time, but the to me, the family is the ultimate team. Whatever your family dynamics are, you can work together and come up with a plan to get through it. You know, and that's, you know, my family, we work together and uh, a lot of the employees here are, are just like family. And we, we just buckled down and said, okay, how do we keep servicing our students, you know, and stay safe? And how do we get through this all together? And everybody has a part to play in it. So your family is your ultimate team. And I highly recommend you involve, even if they're three or four years old, say, okay, some things are a little different right now in the world. You know, here's some things that are going to change. What can we do about it? 
you know, how can, how can we help? So I uh, absolutely agree with now's the time more than ever to really teach your children how to handle whatever difficulties they're going to face. Cause it won't, this won't be the last one. It won't be the last one for us. Yeah. And hopefully we never have a pandemic and hopefully right. we never have something so global cause we've never had this in our lifetime, but no. they will have crises. And it will individually, I mean, I think everybody that's listening probably can think of something in their life that was a lot worse than this individually, whether it was a death in the family or a financial crisis or a divorce or, uh, you know, some other terrible thing that was a lot worse than this, just individually. Right. It just wasn't right. so huge globally. I mean, I've never had anything even close to this. It's, no, but, but individually, we all probably had more than one thing that was worse and we you, you said it right it's a disservice to your kids to shield them in a lot of ways of course we want to protect our kids we don't want them to go get a job when they're four years old although that's not a bad idea we, i'd love to i'd love to have my 18 year old get a job and pay some rent that would be fine but yeah. but you know but it's a disservice to shield them in such a way that they don't get to understand how to handle adversity and we do see that don't we we see so many students where I see teenagers where their parents are keeping them from uh, maybe even getting a job or working or understanding how the real world works. Then they go to college and they, everything's paid for and they get summers off and then they graduate and then they have to go work for a living and they only get one week off a year and get three sick days. And then what happens? They're really frustrated and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, they think that, you know, they think that, that's how it's supposed to be is that everything's always handed to them. And, um, and it's just not, you know, it, it really isn't. And, you know, I, I know as a parent, you know, I, we started off uh, our business and most of you guys listening probably know this. We started off very lean and two young kids and, you know, there were the, a lot of the extras in life that, that we didn't have. Um, and then even as we became more and more successful and, and things like that were becoming easier to provide, you know, it wasn't something that I wanted my kids to really learn that, you know, that just because I had extra, they had extra, you know, they needed to earn their, you know, their extra things. If they wanted a, a phone, if they wanted, you know, insurance on their car, especially as they start getting older and kids get, you know, a job, you know, these are things that uh, are important, important for them to learn. You know, and both my kids, even though they did work in the uh, martial arts school as they were growing up, both of them had other jobs that they did after school uh, or on the weekends to earn that extra money that they wanted for the things that they wanted. And the thing is, it's not just about the money, but in those jobs, they learn a lot about how to deal with people, you know, how to accept authority, how to be fair, how to you know, just relate to others in another way and how to service and, and do their job properly and get a great work ethic. You know, so I think, again, just coming back to when you're uh, in a moment like this where you can teach your child how to contribute, not just to the family, but contribute to the community, because there's some kids doing some really neat things right now to contribute and help, help their local community. And I just think that that's a fantastic way to look at this is how do we not oh my gosh, this is horrible, you know, everything stopped, you know, but okay, here we are. How do we get through it? And how do we help others get through it? It's just, it's just a fantastic time to do that. Absolutely. That's a great point. And, and uh, I know we're going to get your, I know we're going to get your book. And my example for my son was always, uh, when he was eight years old, I told him when he, when he got sick, when he earned, uh, turned 16, he was going to buy his own car with his own money that he earned himself. That was kind of my model. You know, yeah, when you're 16, nobody's going to get you a car. You got to buy your own car with your own money that you earn yourself. And to me, that was always the example. But now this is such a great model for, for us as parents. We have an opportunity. And that's what this should be is an opportunity for us. to. It's going to be different, but it's an opportunity for us to make things better. And when our kids are older, then they're going to be much, much more successful. It's the best predictor of success is your ability to handle adversity. It's a good book called The Adversity Quotient that I, I always – uh, think about right now. The best predictor of success is your ability to handle this kind of adversity. But anyway, go ahead, ma'am. I, I, I think this no, that's is a, that's a great, uh, great tip on a, a book to read. And, and I'm sure everybody could handle reading something positive that could help them get through this. So one of the chapters in uh, 
in my second book, uh, Parenting Survival Guide, is on uh, bragging rights. All right, that's the name of the chapter. And it talks about when is it okay to boast? You know, when is it not okay to boast? And it's really, uh, you know, all, that's for all ages. But as parents, we sometimes kind of want to find out, you know, is it bragging if I tell somebody what a great job my kid did? Or, you know, if my child wants to tell, hey, I won this or something, you know, how do you, how do you keep a balance of that to where it's celebrating, but not, you know, the negative side of it is bragging, which nobody wants to, you know, have their child be out there bragging how great they are. Um, so during this time, when I know a lot of things, a lot of things, and this is a lot of things for everybody, not just graduating seniors, you know, for all of us, you know, I've had really some very special events I was looking forward to canceled, um, you know, and that I can't do. I've had some some jobs, some speaking speaking engagements that uh, had lined up that were canceled, you know, so there's there's a lot of disappointment in some things right now for everybody. So when we talk about celebration and bragging, you know, my point, my perspective is we do need to celebrate, especially as a family, and especially now more than ever, you know, those little milestones, those achievements that your, your children make, or your teenagers make, or even your adult children make, you know, let's, let's get together somehow and, and make a big deal about the little things, because so much for all of us has been taken away. And again, it's, it's global, you know, right now, and everybody's experiencing it, but, but you're going to have, you know, as you, as you know, you're going to have vacations that got canceled for one reason or another. You know, I had a vacation a couple of years ago that got canceled because there was a hurricane, you know, so I didn't get to go on the vacation. You know, I had to come up with an alternate plan, but uh, it's just something right now that you can do at home is do the FaceTime. Hey, you know, Johnny did really good on his homeschool all week and FaceTime the grandparents and, you know, put on a party hat, you know, bake some cookies or something and celebrate. You had a great week. It doesn't have to be a huge accomplishment, but that way we can still get that kind of uh, celebration into our life and that, that sense of community. We had uh, one of the kids recently had a birthday and they had a virtual, like we're doing now on Zoom, they had a virtual birthday party for them where they invited all the friends and they all got to talk and chat. And, you know, they, everybody ordered pizza. So they were even all eating pizza on the thing. And uh, it was just kind of a neat way to handle the situation right now. So, uh, you know, some advice on, on the bragging, you know, when you, when you celebrate, that's completely different than bragging. You know, I try to make sure that kids know and parents know that, Bragging is when you're telling something about yourself in a way to put another person down, you know? So, so for instance, you telling us today about your educational background, you know, that's not bragging, that's educating us on, you know, who you are and what your expertise are in. Now, if you were doing that in a way to say, I'm better than you, I have all this, you know, that would be different. And, and that's really what we need to look at as parents in that respect. So, you know, celebrate, anything that's good is not bragging, celebrating, you know, the accomplishments. So. Well, I think what you said is right too, and making sure kids know uh, the, the difference and invite them to tell about themselves. Because I think some people uh, don't, they don't know the difference in us. So they never tell good things about themselves. You right. know, like, like uh, you invited me to talk about myself. So then it was okay for me to do that. If I just started the conversation, I didn't have very good social skills. I hadn't learned that. And I just said, oh, hi, I'm Greg Moody. And by the way, I'm blah, 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 blah. And I said a bunch of stuff about myself. Well, that would come across as bragging. So right. you've got to teach part of this in the structure of this is we got to make sure our kids know the, the right lines to cross. It's a little bit like self-defense, isn't it? We teach our kids. Yeah, we teach our kids when it's okay to fight and when it's not. I, we, we have a very, we, in, our, in our program and yours too, I know, that, that they know when the line is crossed. When do we have to learn to defend ourselves against somebody that's really trying to seriously injure or kill us? That's, we have, a, we have an obligation to protect ourselves. Then, then we know how to, how to protect ourselves and fight. And then if they're just yelling at us, we, we're not going to punch them. So we, we know when that's okay. And, and these are really important uh, rules to follow uh, in the same kind of context, the social rules. And the social rules happen a lot more. 
Right. And, uh, you know, in the, in the book, this particular book, I have a lot of uh, information on there on bullying, for instance, you know, and you're talking about when is it right to stand up for yourself and, you know, when do you need to walk away? And uh, we've practiced an exercise and you, parents, you know, if you're listening, you can do this at home. It's called uh, walk, talk or kick. And it's an activity we, uh, we play in our school and we put the kids in different scenarios. And it's when, you know, when this happens, should you walk away? Should you talk to someone about it? Or do you need to defend yourself? You know, so you can, you can do that still now, um, even though the kids may not be around other kids and they may not be facing that. What a great time when everything's kind of calmed down to sit down and say, let's go over some stuff about, you know, if you were being picked on, what would you do? Or if you saw somebody else being picked on, what would you do? You know, we have some extra time right now to really spend, uh, get some good lessons on these topics with our kids. And in the book, there's a lot about bullying. And a lot of the stuff in there, you know, um, uh, I've learned from you and, and your research, you did the thesis, your thesis was on bullying and um, how martial arts specifically helps children, one, not be bullied and not become a bully. So there's a lot of good information in there too on that. Well, great. I, I'm glad you brought that up because that was my dissertation for my PhD was on okay. bullying. And and uh, what we know is, is that when kids get their black belt, they're less likely to get bullied more than any other school-based bullying prevention program. So it really is true. We're not making it up that if, if parents get their kids into a program where they, they, they stick it out long enough to be a black belt, then they're much, it's the best thing they could do. They're much less likely to get bullied, but really compared to a lot of people come to us and say, well, I don't want my kid to get bullied. And then we, we teach them a lot of things. And one of the best things they can do is raise their self-confidence so they don't get bullied. And it's hard to, to do something internally with a school when you're a parent that cares about this. If their school, school programs are great, but if your school isn't necessarily doing anything, what can you do individually? Well, what we know is, is they can become, you know, start in martial arts. And that's not a, that's not a tool for us to sell people on martial arts, although it, actually it is, but, but it really is a true statement that, that becoming a black belt is the best thing that we have. There's nothing other, anything I've ever seen and nobody can ever bring it, has ever brought anything to me that says if they do this, we've got some, we've got some academic data that shows that that's the best, that's something better, or even anything that, there's nothing that has any data at all to show that it reduces bullying other than getting their black belt in martial arts. I was actually looking at your book too, and I noticed the chapter on quitting. And, and I thought that was relevant to what we talked about too, especially now at this time. Because there's a lot of people that, that think, well, now's a time where I can quit. Well, I, I thought of two things as you said that. The first thing I thought is you, you were talking about messages parents can, can uh, give their kids right now they're watching a lot of tv they're watching a lot of videos and one of the messages about bullying and about the context of things they watch on tv because maybe kids are watching a lot more tv might be important for parents to um to to start talking about those messages more it's right. a little bit work for parents but there's they don't have the context to be on a playground they don't have the context to be in at school they don't have other things that they're doing where they can yeah. get lessons for yeah, and, I think that that role playing is huge. Mm -hmm. And they the only education. have, the, yeah, they only have the TV to role play with. They don't have their buddies to role play with because, right. there's, no, right? yeah, there's there's no not role playing. There's no real life situations happening. There's only the TV, and this could drag out for another couple months. Right. It, it you know, may, one of the one of the things I was talking to um, one of our instructors with yesterday because the you know we're doing you can probably see behind me we've got everything kind of set up for our virtual classes in there you know, um, but the uh, the students on the videos, we have them separated in different classes. So we have uh, beginner and intermediate and advanced. And the black belts that are coming to the classes, the black belts that are coming to the classes are so much more confident, even in front of the camera. You know, they're just, they're doing, doing their attention. They're asking, raising their hands. They're asking questions. And I just am, uh, you know, amazed at the difference in them and even the intermediate students, students who have been training for six, eight, ten months. Um, they're, they're learning and they're doing well, but you can definitely see a black belt, the difference in the black belts. So just that confidence there alone, you know, and it may be that they know us better, but I think mostly it's because they, um, 
they just are confident with who they are and they're not afraid to ask a question or I'll have a, there's a method to highlight the students and you can highlight the students and they're showing their kickoff or something in front of everybody. And some of the beginner groups are more, um, you know, they're shy. They don't want to show anybody their move. And, you know, I just can see that progress kind of interestingly all day long from the beginner, intermediate, advanced and black belt students. And you can just kind of see how that confidence really, really grows. And you talk about quitting, you know, people quit things that they don't, uh, see a benefit to and one of the things that we really try to educate the students to is that every everything that we do is to reach a, the next goal you know so so everything you're doing every class you take every stripe you earn every um, practice at home that you do is going to help you get closer to that goal and good grief what a, what a great time to be teaching people that right now you know because we still have work to do. We still have bills to pay. We still have people to take care of. You know, we still have, you know, personal goals that you might have. And it's definitely not the time to step back on those, on quitting it. It's a time to put more energy into it because you, we can actually take this time and catapult ourselves further into reaching our goals than for us to just stop and step back and let it not happen. You know, so I think if you have a child who's involved in something, you know, that they can still participate in, like their martial arts classes online. I saw some people doing their music lessons online. You know, all of these things. It's actually time to talk about, you know, we, just because we're in crisis doesn't mean we quit and we, we let our goals go to waste, mm -hmm. our grades go to waste. Right. No, I think that's exactly right. And if, if at the end of, let's say, you know, it's been a month now and it's going to be another month, at the end of two months, the people that kind of stayed at home, and there wasn't a good reason to just stay at home. I mean, you know, we're supposed to stay at home now, but there's, there's the people that stayed at home and didn't get their kids out and maybe didn't come and take class because they said, well, I, I don't, I, you know, I'll just wait till it's over and then I'll come back to class. Whether that's the martial arts class or whether that's a lot of people really aren't doing school a lot of people aren't really doing any other real activities. They're just saying, well, we just can't do our normal things. So we're not going to, we're not going to try to find other things to do. We're not going to find alternatives. I, I used to go to the movies. Now I'm going to, well, movies is a bad example because I can watch Netflix on TV or something, but <laughs> I used to go to the park uh, where I used to, and now in, you know, in California, they can't even really go to the park. Uh, so I'm not, finding, I'm not finding an activity in my backyard. I'm not finding something else to do at the end of those two months they're, it's like atrophied. It's like, it's like if your muscles are attracted, you know, they, if they didn't find a way to exercise, their muscles are attracted. And the longer it goes on, the more you atrophy and you're mentally atrophying too. It's not just physical, but it's mentally. When you get Absolutely. done, at, yeah, when you get done at the end of the time, whenever that's going to be, and you can kind of get back, it's really, really hard. It's oh, yeah. really, really hard. And for those, for, for people that would be in business or if they're just kind of keeping their business going along or keeping their work kind of barely going along and for any, you know, big companies, I know companies are trying Apple computer. They're, they're trying to figure out new ways to work because they can't have their big conferences. They can't have their big things. Or I don't know what another company would be um, car companies. It's, you know, they, how are they going to sell cars? People aren't really going to go out and shop for cars and buy cars. Now they're trying to figure out how to do that. Now, maybe people don't have sympathy for those kind of companies, but they employ people. They have other, you know, the, Oh yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, one of my students here owns a very large company. Uh, they create, uh, they make heaters and they sell them all over the world, you know, and just because of the, uh, social distancing, you know, they've had to uh, cut back on their labor force, you know, and that affects here in my community, that affects 250 families. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, you know, the, the corporation itself, which, which employs so many people, and then the product that they can get out, you know, to, to people who need their product, it's, it's halted quite a bit, you know, so it's not that, you know, Apple or GM or these big companies. So what, well, what about the people who work for them? You know, yeah, but, those are me and you. <laughs> well, and, and what I'm thinking is, you know, what, if everybody keeps pushing forward to whatever level they can, even those com the company that you're talking about, you know, maybe they can handle it for a couple months, but if they don't keep doing something, if everybody doesn't keep pushing forward as much as they possibly can, 
number one, when they get through this, they're going to be able to handle adversity better. They're going to be more successful. And parents, you're going to train your kids better. They're going to be so much more successful. This is not just they're going to survive. We want them to thrive in the future. I think Absolutely. that's the message. And then, mm -hmm. then the next part is, um, is, is that if you go the other way and you don't push forward and you just say, well, I just got to hunker down. I hear that a lot, the mm -hmm. word hunker down. And to me, that gives me a, like a stomach ache. <laughs> hear people right. do that. Say that because what that means is you hunker down at the end it reminds me in my mind, I don't want to be too visual here, but it kind of reminds me in the mind, I see like an old, old movie where somebody that came out of a bunker somewhere and they're all old, they're malnourished and they're, they're, uh, right. you know, they come out at the end of a, you know, they've been stuck in a hole for a couple months, you know, a month or something. Completely, yeah. completely declined. Yeah. And that, respect. Uh, that's, yes. so we've got a choice. We can come through the end of this. Yeah, it's difficult. And, and all the lessons, like the quitting one, I was, I, I mean, I pulled that up because I like, I went right to this one. I, there's so many, there's a lot of things in here. Quitting hinders confidence building. Well, commitment teaches you how to follow through and that you can do anything you set your mind to. That's such a. What better time than right now? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And, it, and we're not just talking about martial arts. We're talking about everything else they do. Um, and parenting is like coaching. No one wants a coach who lets them quit or allows them to give up. That's exactly right. And that's, that's often what we hear a lot of is, well, I don't want to force my kid to do something. The word force sounds pejorative. It sounds bad. But coaches, like what coaches, the people that we think in our lives that are coaches that got us to do amazing things, those are the ones that when, yeah, oh, I'm really tired, they go, okay, keep going. Right. You know, that's, right. what, that's what we got to do now. And that's kind of, to me, the message of what we're saying and completely, and really, that's what your, that's what your book's about a lot is if you, and if you do that, now here's the other thing to me, that's kind of magical about what you've been telling people is if you do that, then all the negative behaviors your kids have, because sometimes, sometimes you get called in, I think when kids are behaving poorly, if you do the things we're talking about in a push a positive supportive positive direction you could say force but i could say supportive positive direction but if you say that then all those negative behaviors a lot of times start going away because the kids are busy the kids are focused on something the kids are doing some really great things it doesn't mean if a kid's got major attention deficit issues that that does that solves all the problems it's not the perfect solution for everything and you've got a lot of things to talk about in your book about that. But I think in a lot of ways, wouldn't you agree that, that that helps a lot of those kind of behaviors go away? Absolutely. It does. You know, um, it's, it's obvious when, when the children are bored or teens are bored, that's when they get in trouble, you know, and what better way to make sure they don't stay bored than to keep their minds engaged in something and, you know, and their bodies too. They're, they're young and healthy. They need to be using them. And the whole thing too, about what you said was just the mindset of support versus force or making them do something as opposed to encouraging them. You know, I, I just, it's just a shift in the way you approach it as a parent, you know, because let's be honest, you, you say, I don't want to make them do something they don't want to do. Well, then they would never brush their teeth. They'd never wash <laughs> their hair. They'd never change their clothes, you know, and they wouldn't eat their vegetables. I mean, it's just, it's just the truth. So it's not, what you're saying is I don't want to force them to do something they don't want to do is not a true statement. You know, you need to think about instead of thinking it, I don't want to think about, I want to support my child in learning. I want to support my child in a better education. I want to teach my child how to uh, stick with something and accomplish something. Because like I said in the book, when you accomplish something, no matter what it is, it builds confidence, you know, and if you want to build a confident child, uh, letting them give up when things get tough is not going to do it. Absolutely. I think that's a good thing to, I think that's a great thing to end on, ma'am, because I know we have to stop and, and I wish we could talk for another couple hours on this. Sure. And I, I'm really excited about everything you're doing in Tennessee and with Ask Master Mom. And, and uh, it's just, it's just thrilling uh, what you've been able to do in the community. And really you've only been working with them for a year. I can't imagine in a year from now, what, what you're going to be doing, not just there, but really expanding all over the country. Um, well, I'll tell you what keeps me going is uh, 
you know, I just had a passion. I had, you know, something on my heart to tell folks and help people. Um, and the encouragement I get from, from those who do read the books or watch the show or train here at the academy, the support I get from the parents and families just makes me want to do more and more and more of it, you know, because uh, at the end of the day, I really want to have made a big difference in the world in a right. positive way. <laughs> Absolutely. I, and I know you are, you're already doing that. And I know you've been doing that oh, thank for, you. for a long time. And this is, this is, you keep pushing forward, talking about pushing forward. You keep doing that and keep looking for new ways to do that all the time as we keep talking about it. And you, I'm sure you got another couple of books in you and, and you're <laughs> going to do, do more podcasts and everything as well. So, all right. Well, thank you very much and I, for inviting thank you. Me. Yeah, absolutely. It was a pleasure having you and, uh, like I said, I appreciate all the help that you've given me in, in being able to get this word out to people. You made it fun and, and uh, simple and very quick in my mind. This all happened very quickly. But thank you so much and uh, stay safe, stay well. Okay, have a great day. <laughs> you too.